Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. Uh, breaking news, the Supreme Court has uh, essentially uh, ruled that America could be the OK Corral, uh, as well as stripping, uh, well, basically making Miranda rights uh, for those arrested uh, null and void. Just your average Thursday in America. Uh, let's start with the Supreme Court's decision uh, invalidating New York's concealed carry law. Uh, this is from the New York Times. The Supreme Court on Thursday struck down a New York law that placed strict limits on carrying guns outside the home, saying it was at odds with the Second Amendment. The ruling was only the court's second major statement on the scope of the individual constitutional right to keep and bear arms, and its first on how the right applies to firearms in public places. The decision has far-reaching implications, particularly in cities that had sought to address gun crimes by putting restrictions on who could carry them. The ruling comes after a spate of mass shootings uh, reinvigorated the debate over gun control. Uh, the Senate is close to passing a bipartisan package on gun safety measures, which will do absolutely nothing. The vote was six to three. Uh, conservative justices uh, all voted for it. New York law requires that people seeking a license to carry a handgun outside their homes show a proper cause. California, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Rhode Island have similar laws, according to briefs filed in the case. Two men who were denied the license they sought in New York sued, saying that, quote, the state makes it virtually impossible for the ordinary law-abiding citizen to obtain a license. The men, Robert Nash and Brandon Koch, were authorized to carry guns for target practice and hunting away from populated areas. State officials told the Supreme Court and Mr. Koch was allowed to carry a gun to and from work. Uh, let's hear uh, CNN has uh, someone explaining uh, the ramifications of this ruling. Erica, the Supreme Court here significantly expanding gun rights and really expanding the scope of the Second Amendment for the first time since 2008. So this is a 6-3 decision written by the senior most justice, Clarence Thomas. What it has done is it has struck down a New York gun law. It was a law that restricted who could carry concealed handguns outside the home. It's a law that stood for more than a century, but the court has now said that that law cannot stand and that uh, crucially here, the Constitution guarantees the right to carry a gun outside the home. That's something the Supreme Court has not said before. The court also saying that states are and will be moving forward restricted from the types of rules that they can enact concerning guns. They can have objective rules, but not discretionary rules. So really this decision, it not only strikes down the New York law and six other states that have laws that are basically identical to this New York law, but it also puts state laws in jeopardy that are similar to this law, um, which required people to show proper cause when they apply for permits. And it will allow scrutiny for all gun laws pertaining to everything, assault weapons, age restrictions, uh, restrictions on magazines. So this, while it, it, it first of all strikes down the New York law, it's also instituting a new framework for courts to evaluate gun laws all over the country. And the dissenting justices here, this was a 6-3 decision, so the court's liberals dissented. And what outgoing retiring Justice Stephen Breyer said is that this severely burdens states' efforts to curb gun violence, because this will call into question gun laws all across the country. Now, while this did strike down the New York law, there was a concurrence from Justices Alito, Kavanaugh, and the Chief Justice Roberts, and it did say that this holding decides nothing about who may lawfully possess a firearm or the requirements that must be met to buy a gun. So they are saying that there are some limits to this decision, but really, Erica, this decision is wide ranging. It will call into question laws all over the country while most immediately striking down this New York law and laws in six other states just like it that had very specific demands on people when they were uh, applying to actually get a license for a concealed handgun in public. And again, Erica, this happening in a state where we saw a mass shooting just recently at a Buffalo supermarket mm -hmm. and that have very populated, concentrated areas like right in New York City where the, the politicians there are worried about people having concealed hand, handguns and going into these very populous places. Now let's play uh, the New York governor, Kathy Hochul's response to this. Beloved children and grandchildren, today the Supreme Court struck down a New York law that limits who can carry concealed weapons. 
Does everyone understand what a concealed weapon means? That you have no forewarning, that someone can hide a weapon on them and go into our subways, go into our grocery stores, like stores up in Buffalo, New York, where I'm from, go into a school in Parkland or Uvalde. This could place millions of New Yorkers in harm's way. And this is at a time when we're still mourning the loss of lives, as I just mentioned. This decision isn't just reckless, it's reprehensible. It's not what New Yorkers want. And we should have the right of determination of what we want to do in terms of our gun laws in our state. If the federal government will not have sweeping laws to protect us, then our states and our governors have a moral responsibility to do what we can and have laws that protect our citizens because of what is going on, the insanity of the gun culture that has now possessed everyone all the way up to even to the Supreme Court. Uh, that was the governor of New York. Obviously, they overturned this law in New York, uh, but it has ramifications for other states that have similar laws. Uh, and essentially, what the Supreme Court ruled uh, is states really can't regulate guns. That's really what this says, <laughs> that states can't really regulate guns, even though the Second Amendment, which these extremist conservatives have bastardized and the NR NRA has bastardized and Fox News, the whole conservative media complex has completely taken out of its original context, was for a re well regulated key, well regulated militia. Uh, in the time of muskets, not bazooka guns. Uh, basically, this will allow just about anybody uh, to leave the home with a gun uh, anywhere. Uh, and despite Kavanaugh is uh, secondary opinion, uh, basically saying this does not this does not uh, have anything to do with who can get a gun, who has access to guns. This ruling is not about that. Uh, we know in this country at this point. Yeah, it varies state to state. Most people could get a gun, uh, even people that shouldn't have it. Our background check laws are a joke. We have loopholes through the gun show loophole, internet sales, neighbor to neighbor. Uh, so basically, we don't have tight enough gun laws uh, that stop uh, mentally ill people from getting a guns, uh, in many cases, criminals from getting guns. Uh, we just saw in Texas, uh, the law allowed uh, clearly somebody that was troubled to get a gun on his 18th birthday. Uh, so despite Kavanaugh saying this ruling does not does not uh, stop states from, uh, you know, having re uh, regulations and laws on who has access to guns and the process for getting a gun. We all know there's more loopholes in our gun laws than a roller coaster. And frankly, we're not going to see uh, much change through this bipartisan deal that doesn't do much on the main issues, which are the assault weapons, high capacity magazines, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to show this tweet because when we see what by, by next week, which we think the Supreme Court Roe v. Wade decision is going to come down unless something radical changes uh, from now to then, uh, the decision's probably going to overturn Roe v. Wade based on the leaked draft opinion we already received. Uh, this says it all. This is from uh, Neil uh, Katyal. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name uh, correct. He's a Supreme Court lawyer. Uh, he tweeted, going to be very weird if the Supreme Court ends a constitutional right to obtain an abortion next week, saying it should be left to the states to decide right after it just imposed a constitutional right to concealed carry of firearms, saying it cannot be left to the states to decide. Can't really say it better, although that guy should be called out because he also was the person who wrote an op-ed why liberals should back Neil Gorsuch for the New York Times. But on this tweet, he's correct. Basically, these extremist judges are, who, by the way, were, be, were put into the Supreme Court by the Federalist Society and other special interest dark money groups, including the NRA, who uh, spent millions and millions of dollars uh, to on ads in support of these Supreme Court justices uh, and interest groups to put them over the line to be confirmed. But basically, the Supreme Court is saying, yeah, no, states can't really uh, make laws uh, on concealed carry, on who can uh, con conceal a gun and you leave, leave the home with it 
That's the Second Amendment. We can't do that. Uh, but Roe v. Wade, reproductive rights for women. Yeah, no, the federal government can't dictate that. That has to be left to the states. Clearly, no consistency there. I don't see a constitutional provision that would make it okay to discard uh, states' rights when it comes to gun control, but embrace state rights when it be when it comes to, you know, dictating a woman's vagina. Sorry to be crass, but when you have activists and political operatives in robes pretending to be judges, this is what you get. Uh, I want to play a clip from Jeffrey Tubin. You know, he's not. Uh, doing anything inappropriate in this clip. We know his history, uh, but he made a good point. This is Jeffrey Tubin on CNN. And I think we're going to see and hear a lot more of that in the wake of this decision. Uh, we sure are. And, and I think it's important to um, explain Justice Thomas's reasoning, um, which is, I think a lot of people understand the First Amendment in the sense that everyone knows that you and I uh, we don't need a permit from the government to hand out a leaflet in Times Square that says Biden for president or Trump for president. The government really is not allowed to regulate speech in this country, um, e except in very, very narrow circumstances. What Justice Thomas says repeatedly in this opinion is the Second Amendment is just like the First Amendment, is that the government may not regulate uh, individuals' possessions of weapons for self-defense, just like they can't regulate the uh, speech of, of private citizens. That's a very different approach to uh, the Second Amendment and to public safety that the Supreme Court has held previously. And it's certainly a very different approach than the states that are attempting to deal with gun violence um, uh, uh, have, are, are, are putting forth now. Now, there is this, I think, somewhat bizarre um, concurring opinion uh, by Justice Kavanaugh where he says, no, 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 there still is the possibility for uh, some sort of background check rules. But that does seem somewhat inconsistent with what the majority holds, even though Justice Kavanaugh mm -hmm. is part of the majority. But, but what's clear, what's entirely clear from um, today's opinion is that it is going to be much more difficult for states and localities to le to regulate any sort of gun 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 uh, gun possession gun background checks uh, than it was previously. Uh, they basically have two contradictory opinions. One says states like New York can't regulate guns. That's what this is. You anyone could leave their home now. Uh, with a gun concealed. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, Kavanaugh's opinion says, well, you know, this doesn't apply to background checks and other things. No, the lawsuits are already being filed against states and their gun laws after this law. To me, this kind of reminds me of Citizens United, uh, which opened up the floodgates, obviously, for the United Corporations of America and for the mass suffocation and tsunami of money in politics. Uh, we already had money in politics before Citizens United. This just was rocket fuel to that. Uh, and you started seeing lawsuits after Citizens United. Um, now, you, we're already, I guarantee you, by the end of today, lawsuits will begin to be filed uh, challenging state gun laws. Uh, and it's going to make it even more difficult to do anything on background checks, assault, uh, 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 banning assault weapons, uh, high capacity magazines, closing gun show loophole, Internet sales, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because the Supreme Court just said basically uh, the the states can't do any can't do much uh, because it is a uh, you know violates the Second Amendment and the they're going the, but the federal government obviously can't do anything because the federal government particularly the Republicans uh, are okay with mass execution if it keeps them in power and keeps money from the NRA and other special interests coming so it's a pretty bad thing and to be clear to be clear in New York City in particular. This is very dangerous. Subways, buses, trains. Pretty much now it's open season. Anyone can walk on to these uh, transit, uh, busy areas, Times Square, et cetera, with a gun. We can't put metal detectors everywhere. We don't want to live in a society like that. So it is extremely dangerous. Uh, and the same thing's probably going to happen in other cities uh, that have busy transit uh, and other places. By the way, all this is happening at a time of societal rot. People are facing evictions because of rising prices. Uh, people are being uh, priced out of the communities they're from. 
You have people, uh, more and more people being thrown out into the streets and homeless. Uh, you have people working two to three jobs. You have people right now making tough decisions, rationing, uh, you know, rationing certain things or totally discarding certain necessities because gas is like $70, $80 a tank. So they have to cut certain necessities for others. All of this obviously leads to th crime, leads to drug addiction, alcoholism, problems in marriages and families, which then as research and research and sociology will tell you often leads to violence and the Supreme court just made it easier for that violence, but they were not done. They were not done. Uh, they also had a very, 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 very horrendous decision, uh, basically making Miranda rights. Uh, once you're arrested, null and void, uh, this is from CNN Supreme court limits ability to enforce Miranda rights. The Supreme Court limited the ability to enforce Miranda rights in a ruling Thursday that said that suspects who are not warned about their right to remain silent cannot sue a police officer for damages under federal civil rights law, even if the evidence was ultimately used against them in their criminal trial. The court's ruling will cut back on an individual's protection against self-incrimination by barring the potential to obtain damages. It also means that the failure to administer the warning will not expose a law enforcement officer to potential damages in a civil lawsuit. It will not impact, however, the exclusion of such evidence at a criminal trial. The, courts, the court clarified that while the Miranda warnings protect a constitutional right, the warning itself is not a right that would trigger the ability to bring a civil lawsuit. If you're as confused by that as I am, it's meant to confuse you because it's not based on any actual legal principle. Today's ruling doesn't get rid of the Miranda right, <laughs> said Steve Vladek, CNN Supreme Court analyst and professor at the University of Texas School of Law, but it does make it far harder to enforce. Under this ruling, the only remedy for a violation of Miranda is to suppress statements obtained from a suspect who's not properly advised of his right to remain silent. But if the case never goes to trial or if the government never seeks to use his statement or if the statement is admitted notwithstanding the Miranda violation, there's no remedy at all for the government's misconduct. Uh, this tweet says it all. While everyone is talking about the gun case, please consider Vega v. Tecca. Scott Scotus just said that if police fail to inform you of your rights, you can't sue them. This is the death of Miranda rights. Ordinary people are dis disempowered. Government impunity grows. So on top of uh, police officers enjoying qualified immunity, which basically shields them from civil lawsuits if they kill mostly unarmed black men. Now we've basically made Miranda rights null and void. Another tweet I want to show you, the six conservative justices just held that, quote, the violation of Miranda does not necessarily constitute a violation of the Constitution. That's from Samuel Alito. Kagan responds, quote, today the court strips individuals of the ability to seek a remedy for violations of the right recognize in Miranda. Uh, Kagan further explains why this matters. Quote, sometimes as a result of a Miranda violation, a defendant will be wrongly convicted and spend years in prison. What remedy does he have for all the harm he has suffered? You know, obviously we're going to see the tweets today blaming Susan Sarandon for all of this, blaming Jill Stein, blaming Bernie Sanders, blaming you, blaming me, blaming Anyone who did not vote for the lesser of two evils, uh, did not vote for Hillary Clinton, et cetera, et cetera. You know what? I've already given my thoughts on that, that those things are obviously not true. Uh, I, actually, if you want to blame someone, blame President Obama in 2016, who basically folded like a cheap tent when Mitch McConnell violated the Constitution. Uh, he did not challenge Mitch McConnell, who refused to hold a hearing for his attorney, for his Supreme Court uh, Justice Merrick Garland. Uh, Obama could have taken it to court, likely would have won because it is a violation of the Constitution. He should have got a hearing and uh, Merrick Garland should have been approved. He's not my cup of tea, but I don't think he would be voting to overturn Roe v. Wade or for crazy gun shit like this or for this Miranda stuff. Um, so Obama is just at fault. And in modern day, Clarence Thomas, if he actually had uh, an opposition party with a pulse, we would be having impeachment hearings for Clarence Thomas because clearly his wife, Jenny Thomas, in collaboration with Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, was trying to overturn the 2020 election. And 
uh, Ginny Thomas was getting inside information on Supreme Court deliberations from her husband, which is, by the way, a violation of Supreme Court rules. So you could be holding hearings for just uh, Justice Thomas. Would he be impeached? Probably not, but at least look like you're fighting. Also, you could expand the court. Sure, Republicans would do it on the back end, but you have to do something now because obviously you have six extremists on the court. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't want to fear monger, but this ruling, particularly on the guns, creates an OK Corral Western shootout uh, scenario, uh, because pretty much now anyone we already know just about anyone could get a gun in this country. Uh, but now anyone could go anywhere with a gun. There are no rules in New York and likely to follow other uh, pl other cities uh, in terms of who and where they could bring a gun. And in terms of Miranda White, Miranda rights, we know who's going to face the brunt of this ruling, the most poor people who don't have access to high priced lawyers uh, and basically already were having their rights violated even more so now. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in to Status Coup's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at five o'clock Eastern time and Fridays at four o'clock Eastern time.